So I want to do an example of a truss that's indeterminate internally. Uh, if it's indeterminate internally, that means that uh, I'm probably able to determine all the external reactions, uh, but I can't determine all the bar forces. Okay, consider this truss. Uh, what looks like a square truss, four feet on each side. Okay, all bars have the same cross-sectional areas in Young's modulus. Uh, no connection here between bars A, D, and B, C. Okay, notice I've got three reactions, two at A and one at B. I've got three loads, 1.5 kips, two kips, two kips. So a classical truss problem that I made up real fast uh, for purposes of demonstrating an indeterminate truss. Okay, so B is six, R is three, N is four. Okay, six bars, three reactions, external reactions, and uh, four nodes. Uh, it doesn't count as a node here because the bars don't connect at, uh, at that intersection. B plus R is nine, two N is eight. One degree of indeterminacy internally. Uh, however, externally, we do have three reactions, so it's determinate externally, but uh, it happens to be indeterminate internally. So I want to find the reactions and the bar forces. Now the external reactions, I can find those very easily. Just like that, I find A sub X, A sub Y, and B sub Y. So uh, step one, using the flexibility method, choose a redundant bar. So I'll let BC be the redundant. Okay, so I'm going to cut bar BC and then reevaluate what the uh, internal bar forces are, or I shouldn't say reevaluate, I'll evaluate what the internal bar forces are if I were to remove that redundant CD. Okay, so step one, let BC be the redundant, so I cut through that member. Step two, primary truss, cut member BC, uh, B as in Bravo, C as in Charlie. Okay, so BC. Okay, imagine taking a, a hacksaw and cutting through member BC. That's what I'm showing here. And it's dashed because it's now a zero force member. And now when I cut it, it's going to open up a distance delta sub zero or delta naught. Uh, so now based on this, you notice that the external reactions are all the same. Loads, I didn't change any of those. Uh, I want to determine what the internal bar forces are based upon uh, cutting through member BC. And it looks as though I forgot to label the nodes. Okay, fixed it. And uh, I also can determine by inspection what some of these internal bar forces are. For example, uh, if I examine joint B, okay, uh, there's no horizontal force, meaning that AB will be zero, internal bar force in AB. Also, there's no, uh, there's, uh, no bar BC to help carry the vertical load. And so BD, that'll be 3.5 in compression. So these two I can determine by inspection. Similarly, by analyzing joint C, 1.5 acting to the right, so CD, 1.5 kips in compression. Okay, AC, 2 kips in compression because of that 2 kips acting down. So how do I determine the internal force in bar AD? Well, I could analyze a, a joint A or joint D. Okay, 1.5 square root of 2, uh, so that uh, member AD is in tension. 1.5 times the square root of 2, so uh, whatever the decimal equivalency of that is, uh, you can figure that out. Okay, step three, apply two unit forces along BC. So uh, remember that if I cut bar BC, a guy working with an air wrench in the background. I wonder if you can hear that in the video. Uh, I live in a semi-industrial area, so. Okay, so I uh, delta sub zero. Remember, I cut this bar, so I gotta pull it back together again. So that's what this is, the one kip load you see there. Okay, there's no external reactions to speak of. No external reactions to speak of. Uh, this is kind of like an aerospace structure. As civil engineers, all of our structures are fixed to the ground, but uh, this is not considered fixed to the ground, but nevertheless, there'll be some internal bar forces. So I don't bother showing the pin and roller at B. They're irrelevant for purposes of this, but I, knew, I do need to calculate the new internal uh, member forces. There it is. I calculate all the internal bar forces. So negative square root of 2 over 2. Uh, those are the internal bar forces on the outside members. And then across AD, it's 1 in tension. These are all in kips. Okay, so that's step 3. And now I want to organize all this into a table. 
organize all this into a table. I've got the primary truss and I've got this uh, truss here with the two unit forces along BC. Organize everything into a chart. Uh, my six bars. Okay, so uh, what am I putting together here? Uh, the length of each bar. Uh, F sub P, so I'm using the method of virtual work. I have a real system and I've got a virtual system. So I'm considering this. Remember this? This will be my real system. Take note of all the bar forces. Transfer them over here into the table. Did I do that correctly? And then this is my virtual system. Remember this? I'll consider this to be my virtual system. Notice all the bar forces. Transfer those over. Okay, and then the last column. What? F sub Q times F sub P times L. This times this times this. Uh, so if you have a spreadsheet uh, program, you can uh, maybe program these into a spreadsheet. Uh, so what I'm looking for is the delta sub zero. That's what I'm trying to find. The delta sub zero using virtual work. Okay, notice I don't bother showing the AE here. Uh, AE is constant, so uh, I don't need to mention that until I stick them into the formula. So uh, the AE is constant, I don't bother mentioning it. So I come up with these figures. And notice that I keep it exact. Uh, so that would be the pure mathematician in me that wants to keep everything exact. I find the sum and it's about 381.588. Okay, so what? What good does that do? Uh, there was another unknown here too, wasn't there? Okay, the other unknown uh, was the deformation of the virtual truss. Okay, so I'm talking about this. Uh, when I apply the one kip load along the diagonal, uh, there'll be some deformation, won't there be? Okay, uh, there's going to be a, a closing of that cut. So when I cut it here, it opened up a distance delta sub zero. Now when I apply the one kip load to CB, it's going to want to pull this end and this end closer together. So I didn't put it on here, but uh, that uh, amount of closure, uh, I'll call that uh, delta sub zero, little delta sub zero. Okay, so I'll put it right here. Delta sub zero, uh, that'll be the distance that uh, C, that the two ends of CB move closer together. So I'm going to find that also. Now in order to do that, I can consider this to be both the real and the virtual both the real and the virtual system. So there's another column that I'm going to throw on here. Another column uh, where I consider this to be both the real and the virtual. So I won't have FQ, FPL. I'll have uh, F sub Q times F sub Q times L. Okay, so that'll be the next column. So there it is. I put together the calculations for that last column. F sub Q squared, that'd be this column squared, times L, that'd be this column. Okay, be aware, be aware of the unit, square kips times inch. Okay, add it all up. 231.765. Okay, uh, what does this have to do with anything? Remember this standard equation? Remember this? Uh, AE is constant, so I pull that out of the summation. So uh, remember there's two deflections I'm trying to find. Delta sub zero for the primary truss, and then uh, little delta sub zero for the unanchored truss. I call it unanchored because there's no external reaction supporting this thing, so it's, uh, it's like it's floating free in space. Okay, so for the primary truss, put together the equation one kip load, one kip uh, uh, virtual load times delta sub zero, one over AE 381.588. That's this number. Okay, and then for the unanchored truss, that would be my unit force truss. One kip times little delta sub zero. One over, uh, one over AE times 231.765. Uh, that's this number here. Okay, so if I knew what AE was, I could calculate delta sub zero and little delta sub zero. Uh, I don't really need that because uh, uh, now I'm going to proceed to compatibility. Uh, step four would be to repeat this with the other redundants, but I only had one redundant bar, so no need for step four. So step five is compatibility. Okay, step five, stick everything into the compatibility equation. Okay, so delta sub zero, I found that. Uh, X is the redundant, in this case it's the bar force in BC. A little delta sub zero, found that. Solve for F sub BC, negative 1.65 kips. 
So going back to the original drawing, negative 1.65 1.65 kips in compression, and now step six would be to uh, use the method of joints or the method of sections to find all the other internal bar forces. So I calculate all the other internal bar forces as you see here. A negative means compression, positive means tension. Uh, so there you have it. This was an indeterminate truss, indeterminate internally. So I found all the external reactions and I found all the bar forces. So there you have it.